welcome to Weekends with Whitney. Coming up in today's show, turning up the heat and the love factor for your Valentine. We go in the kitchen and outside on the grill <laughs> with the sassy sisters of Bulldog Pepper Jelly. They'll show us how to take a Louisiana favorite fish and easily turn it into something extraordinary. A meal fit for a king and queen. Then Dr. Nick shows us why coddling our kids keeps them from being their best. And that's what makes it so hard to be a parent or a teacher or a counselor or anybody that's trying to empower someone. We have to say, you're gonna get hurt. It's gonna happen. But first, taking the ordinary and making it extraordinary. It's easier than you think, and just might put some extra sizzle in your upcoming Valentine's Day. I've got myself a Sara Lee frozen I was, solid. <laughs> I would say more like you got yourself a situation. Okay. A 911. So I want to make this a beautiful okay. little heart shaped cheesecake. It. So I have okay. smashed down this cookie cutter and I'm just kind of, look, I peeled half the pie pan Go away. For it, sis. And I'm, I'm going to work it till like a full time this is job. Easy. Look. Oh. Okay. Worst case scenario, you do whipped cream around that whole tin edge and, and tell just them eat the, it out of there. Just tell them, saying. dig in. Okay. <laughs> it's a pot pie at that point. Okay. That's All right, let's away. get rid of that. We're going to let this melt a little bit and then we're going to try we to. Are? We're going to let that slip off of there, yeah. What? When we come back to this in a few, you're not going to recognize this beauty. It's She's going to be, be all dressed up and ready for Valentine's Day. Ready for prom. Hey, dear. What I did is I melted a little bit of chocolate in the microwave, but you gotta be real careful with it. I couldn't make it pour, so I just put it in a Ziploc bag, and I'm gonna drizzle it over this. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of this strawberry pepper jelly, mm -hmm. right? And we're gonna give it a little bit of action with that. Let's throw some, a little bit of bacon dust oh, for that sweet I think savory. It's fairy dust. Fairy the dust. Fairy dust of food. <laughs> and then look, I took one of these strawberries and I just sliced it lengthwise, and I'll just put that around there. Okay. Like that. Please. There you go. Masterpiece. That looks beautiful. I'm going in. A little bit of bacon dust on there mm. with some strawberry pepper jelly and some chocolate drizzle. Mm. What do you think? Genius. Mm. Wonderful. And I just got a little fire for the pepper jelly. Bravo, girl. No, thank you. Thank so you. Woo! Hey. Valentine's Day, that's one way to heat it up. <laughs> So we have a spaghetti squash, fresh. We've prepped these babies. All right, I'm gonna just put a little olive oil in there and I'm gonna rub it around. I'm gonna put a little salt and pepper. These are gonna bake. And our ultimate goal on this deal is to have these, which they're gonna do, turn into spaghetti. Yeah, if you cut it long ways, you cut the strands that go right. around. But if you cut it in half like this, then you get a full spiral. Yeah, out totally. More like a spaghetti. So we're gonna do, our little menu today is uh, some grilled redfish and grilled shrimp, and then we're gonna just layer those beautiful shrimp over this spaghetti squash. Beautiful. beautiful. It's gonna, gonna be so tasty. Okay, I'm gonna pop that in the oven. Let me put these in the oven. <laughs> And that's one about what, 350, Cindy? 350, and I think I'm gonna go for about 30 or 35 minutes, okay. and I'll check them. You go until it's done, so don't ask us. We just do it till it's done. Now, yeah, Cindy's gonna prep these Brussels sprouts, and we're gonna, you can do them any way you like. We're gonna, we have this beautiful cast iron griddle type thing that you can put on a grill, or you can do them on a stove top and kind of braise them. And uh, you can add, we do roasted pecan normally on these, or you can do roasted garlic. But today, I don't know, are we gonna do that? Let's just see how we feel. We're I think gonna we're overload. Gonna use, like, if I were gonna do a meal, I wouldn't put pepper jelly on everything. Right. Like, I would pick one thing probably out of the deal, unless you totally alter the, uh, 
the nature of the beast. That's Just right, because it's so good. Because anyway, you can't you do that, it. right. Where's our that? So chicken bag? Look, right. We gotta save everything for those chickens. Mm -hmm. So we have chickens at home that provide us with great meals, so we save all of our extras for that. You can do a little broccoli, asparagus, all this can be tossed together. You bend it till it breaks, and that's the good part. And we really do grow asparagus. It's amazing, too. To, what how an easy crop. It is, but how long does it take? To grow. Okay, so we planted it the first year. By the second year, you're getting tiny little asparagus. Third year, in full bloom, and they last up to 20 years on a crop. So you have to plant it somewhere permanent, kind of semi-permanent. We did that, and it, it looks like a um, asparagus. That's where asparagus fern gets its name. Yeah. Because the whole top of it looks like this. Then they root out and grow straight up, and you just snap them off. There is nothing more rewarding <laughs> than your chickens getting loose and eating all that. <laughs> Okay, that's happened too. So just saying, you got to get out there before sunrise on a good spring day. <laughs> so we do want a little color in here. We did some heirloom tomato, like little cherry some tomatoes. Some beautiful little heirlooms. Yeah. And I'm gonna go ahead and slice up the, a little bit of this uh, to put on the grill. And this that yellow would be squash. 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 <laughs> I love these on the grill too, especially when you have a really good seasoned grill. They just take on, they feel like a steak actually when you get them done. I'm gonna dump all this into a bowl and I'm gonna put a little olive oil on it and some salt and pepper. And then every, I'm gonna put just the yellow squash on the grill, but the rest of it, I'm gonna decide later. Decide later. <laughs> hey, thanks for that. I forgot I what know, I was I doing. Know what you thinking. These I'm going to use to garnish, and this is going on a redfish, and I'm going to chop this parsley up really good. Okay, so we're going to take this outside. Oh, you're <laughs> dead! <laughs> Did it, oh, it, no one was harmed in that. We've we'll got the redfish on. We seasoned it with salt, pepper, and a little bit of olive oil. Oh, we want to keep it enough. super so light. On oh, cedar planks, though, it's going to be like oh, smooth. Oh, it's going to be amazing. Cedar plank. Okay. So we're going to close that down for right now and let that go for about 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. And we're just going to watch it till it gets flaky. Okay. In the meantime, we've Speaking got a flaky. <laughs> What's next, Butch? <laughs> you know we're flaky. We have our our veggie. Yeah, oh, that looks things delicious. all ready to go. We're gonna put these on the grill, these oh, good. squash, and the rest of them are gonna go in that cast iron skillet that's heating oh, up in there. That's what's going on. And we're gonna do it until like these are blistered, the little tomatoes are blistered, and then right at the same time we're gonna put the shrimp on. We have made a mixture of butter, lemon, and a little bit of our garlic pepper jelly. Yeah. So what we did is a stick of butter. We did a half a squeeze of a lemon, yeah, a whole and a half, lemon, a half a jar of uh, pepper jelly, garlic, of garlic pepper chose. jelly, and some green onions. How? I think that we did parsley and green onions, or yeah. you can do either. Or we're gonna baste the redfish with that just a little cooking. bit while it's cooking. Yeah. And you know we're gonna do that several times. We're gonna do it also on the uh, shrimp when we get ready to do that. Yeah, this is so yummy. So you God, have that it smells tangy, amazing. Lemony flavor with that sweet, savory Ooh. garlic. Almost oh caught my, my hand on that, and that wood's catching on far. <laughs> so when your board catches on fire. Look, you just do a little bit, look, you go. You just, there you go, you <laughs> blow it out like this. <laughs> look at my eyes are watering. <laughs> And remember, these were coated with a little olive oil. Cheer, look up, look, look, ready. One, one two, two, three, ho! Oh! It's not flaky That's yet. It's still, oil, it's still, it's still, okay. it's still tight. Got it. It's still on. We're Give it a little time it just right. Shrimp take very little time to happen. Tell you. <laughs> now we're gonna veggies. keep that grill hot. Good. Okay. Do we need to toss those veggies or no? We're I good? just did. Okay. Okay. Great. I gave him a good stir. Oh, what? Absolutely. Again? I think you should base the fish again. I do. Right now? Yeah. Oh, hey, Go ahead, I Whitney. Look how, oh, look at that cook. Uh -huh. She's on a mission. Gorgeous. We might need to. This one's almost looking done, so we might need to flip those plank boards. What do you think? Oh, boy. Don't do it. Don't do I it. I can do it. I can do it. Don't do it. I can do it. it. It's okay, not too hot. Good. 
Oh, God. Oh, it's hot, girl. Go fast, girl. No, I'm trying. There you go. And on. God. When? Look. You did it. Hands of steel. <laughs> Fingers. Look, believe me. Believe me, if you have all the sensation in every finger, you haven't cooked enough. Right. <laughs> oh, those are going to be gorgeous. Oh, it's coming together. I can't wait for this great lunch. so good. My parents wanted us to be loaded like money. They should have been doctors and lawyers. <laughs> they were like They were adventurers, that, too. No, they were like... I lived my life, you know. I traveled with them and did my thing with them and learned that gypsy lifestyle from them. Like, I it. don't know where it's coming from, but you just do it. Yeah, I love oh, it. You, it just look, works. And you, you do kind of remind me of gypsies. Mm -hmm. Everyone take a look at their little... Okay, those this precious new no, rugs. but this is really because we don't because like one. to bathe or t wash our hair. No, <laughs> okay. Oh, my gosh. No, yeah, I, I have never get away been with able that. to I don't like to cook without a do-rag on. I don't know why. I just well, because of that. She's going to hear. You know what? It's your cute hair. If you have good dinner, Dinner napkins, we will take them off and no, put them on our head. Are These are dinner napkins. napkins. I'm going to love them before you leave. I think I have some cute ones. <laughs> They're ready. Ready? Ladies, yeah. let's check on our Louisiana wild caught seafood here. Hey, is oh, that the only way ready. to go? It's only oh, wild. it has that oh, they're perfect. perfect. Yes. Thank Woo, you very much. Beautiful nose. Hey, Cindy, should we give it a little toss with the. Um, Oh, it's let's do it. Let's, let's give them a little wipe. Let's swipe, let's, wipe. Let's act like Whitney knows what she's doing. Can we yeah, put it on our something. beautiful platter? No, you're right. No, no, no. We should. If, it, if it's got butter, it's butter. Look, we just. Uh, oh, she's touching every oh, song. Every Honey's shingle thing. <laughs> every shingle thing. Oh, we're going to put those right here on the uh, perfection. The star of the show, our yes, redfish welcome. on the Louisiana half shell. Caught. Thank you very much. I think like four days ago. Jada wrote us. I dad. know. With big She's our mom. love of our right. life, our supplier. Of You know, I was mad because I was not I know in the boat. Out there. Yeah. <laughs> so I've been upset. Where's the fork? Somebody's got a fork. I'm, a, I'm getting a bite of this. Fork. Liquid gold. Liquid gold. I'm saving it because I want to put it on some of my fishes. So get your hand. Get those claws out of there. Move oh, back. I'm going to get it. Done. Done. Girl. No, that was a wrap. It's so good. Wrap. If you want more flavorful ideas, there are lots of them. Just log on to their website, bulldogpepperjelly.com. And still ahead, Dr. Nick on why coddling our kids can have confounding consequences as Weekends with Whitney continues. Each morning in Baton Rouge, we rise to meet opportunity. We carry the weight of responsibility proudly. We choose our paths, we move fast, and we fly high. We light the way for others to follow. We make it happen. But what really matters is what happens when we land at home. Baton Rouge Metropolitan Airport. Fly easy. Atlas Foundation Repair. Fixing your foundation problems for more than 30 years while preserving and protecting your trees. See that dog lover? About to unleash the terror hound on these friendly, unsuspecting canines. Well, I'm the human dislike button, and I see it too. Easy there, Cujo. Taking part in a dog socialization program at a shelter or pet store can help nip this problem in the butt. And no matter how well socialized your pet is, cleaning up the little rays of sunshine they leave in their merry wake is your responsibility. To learn more about me, go to breck.org slash hdb. Discover your art of living at Dixon Smith Interiors. With 10,000 square feet of inspired interiors, it's easy to bring beauty home. Create a unique interior that reflects your exterior. Translate what you love into where you live. For 60 years, Dixon Smith has refined the art of style, space, and comfort. You're a work of art. Your home should be too. 
Embrace your art of living at Dixon Smith Interiors in the heart of Baton Rouge. Discover Dixon. The world is a safe place. The world is a dangerous place. Which is it? Dr. Nick joins us with more. <laughs> we're, we're gonna have everybody more confused. <laughs> Whitney, it's a dichotomy can, of life. Thank you. Can there be a truth in both statements? Absolutely. Absolutely. Is there? Absolutely. The reason why I guess I've been so into this question is because in my office when people come in, the primary thing I want them is to feel safe. Mm, I, yes. Safe, meaning you can talk here, you can say what you want, you're not gonna be hurt, I'm not gonna shame you, right? Right. I may challenge you, but I'm not, but I'm always saying safety, safety, safety. Then I get to thinking about real life, who's really that safe? Isn't the world sometimes dangerous, hostile? You're a parent. Right. What, what do, do we want to keep our kids at, in, in dock at the bay? Do we want to keep them hidden in the darkness of a closet and never go out and face? We can't. Uh, I mean, do we, do, do we We're are, are, are hurricanes safe? Are floods safe? No. Right. But we have, what, resilience? I would hope that yes. would be the word. Confidence. But, we'll, but we'll, hope we'll come back to that. But do you agree with me that they're both? Absolutely. It's both and. Absolutely, and, and, and we're, we're talking about that in the thread of coddling our kids too yes, much. Yes, yes, the, the new book that I've read, The Coddling of the American Mind. Yes. Yeah, which is tough and, and in itself controversial. Sure. You know, because it, it may be a little bit too far, but, but the basic premise I gathered from reading it was that, you know, we just are overprotective. Right, and, and maybe and not I'll just of our children, sometimes of our friends or spouses or our older parents. I mean, we just, I think sometimes as people, we want everything to be perfect and rosy. And so certainly when we're raising our children, we can be overprotective, we can solve their problems, we can do their homework, we can um, fix any challenge. We don't want them to fail, so we do the homework. Which is, which is just so, yeah counterproductive sure. in the big picture of things. Why do we do it, Dr. Nick? We do it because we love them and because there's something in us that does want to protect. And that's what makes it so hard to be a parent or a teacher or a counselor or anybody that's trying to empower someone. We have to say, you're, you're gonna get hurt. It's gonna happen. You're, but, but what happens when you get hurt? How do you do? You get called bad names. Do you immediately want to call the parent and say, don't you let your child call my son or daughter bad names? We got to deal with what they're going through and feeling first. Right. Huh? And then help them realize, well, you know, yeah, I've been called a few bad names in my life. True. True. I've been talked about in my life. So. I don't want to diminish it, but it's like it's 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 putting on some kind of thicker armor that I can deal with it. Because and, life will throw them some curveballs, and you won't always be there. Right, right. They're going to have to deal with things in the moment. But but how have we changed as a society so much in just a couple of generations? I can tell you that my mom's parents would never have been the coddlers that this generation is. Never, never. Whitney, I, 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 I hesitate because I don't want to get too much into it, but I do think there's, we, it, some of it really is the political correctness. We're, we're supposed to say this, we're not supposed to say that. Mm. If we say this, we're being offensive to a particular group, it becomes very tribal. And, and so we're always, we're just overly sensitive. We're overly sensitive. We, we're even, we, we even now question a joke and say, well, that's not funny because it offends someone. Right. You know, uh, 
I, I was just the other day, somebody took something from me and then gave it back. No, I, I took some, I gave somebody something and took it back. And he said, you're such an Indian giver. And even I started thinking, should we be using that phrase anymore? Oh, right. Probably not. It's offensive. And I, I'm not saying that we should or shouldn't. Sure. I'm just, as you said, we've moved into so many things are, we've got to be alert, sensitive. Yeah, but you know, I also ask, because my grandparents were coddlers to my, to my mother and, and her siblings. They didn't try to make the path so, so easy. easy. But I'm gonna tell you one other thing, and, and give me your thoughts on this. Their egos were not also so entrenched in their children. Say that again. My but, grandparents' egos were not, not entrenched in their children. I think that has changed. I would uh, say that my generation, a lot of parents, their ego is in their kid and their kid's success. Oh, uh, yes. I'm with you now. And, Took you know, are they the star yes. football player? Yes. Are they the number I'm one living, student? I'm living through my children. Yes. I'm li another way of putting it. Right. And Instead of empowering them, again, and, and almost separating yourself from them, this is you. Yeah, is that one of the reasons why we coddle more too? I, I mean, could I, that be a, a piece to that puzzle? I think that's a very good piece to that puzzle. I think it's a very good piece to that puzzle. Because remember, we live in a kind of a psychological, intimate, fulfillment, purposeful age, and nobody really has it completely. Right. So my child is gonna be it, you know? And, and it's like, it's like I'm, I'm gonna entitle you but I'm also going to make sure you act this way. Yeah. And you come out this way for the sake of me. Yeah, or how about you're going to be everything I wasn't. I wasn't the quarterback. Yes. I wasn't yes. the star cheerleader. Yes. I was, so by golly, you're going to be because yes. then I got a little piece yes. of it. Yes. I, yeah, and, and it's... The, the, just, just a, because remember, we're basically middle class yeah. whites. Think about how difficult it is to try to get children ready for the world when you're a single parent, oh. when you're working three jobs, when you when you can barely make ends meet. Parents like that don't have time to sit and listen to their children right. because part of building resilience is listening mm -hmm. and validating, huh? It's not trying to fix. It's okay, you made a D. What can we do to get it to a C? Mm -hmm. I'm here with you. That takes time, right. effort. Sure. Sure. Quizzing it, your kid on, on the information. And, and, <laughs> and also getting back to what you said, I think it'd be hard for me if a son or a daughter of mine came home with the D. I'd want to be shaking them and say, okay, I'm doing your homework from now on. Just because I don't want to fail. It's like you said, we're living through them. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. I don't want to fail, so I'm going to make sure. It has nothing to do with me. It has to do with trying to get him or her to do better each time. And you know, you and I have talked about this too. Sometimes we learn our best lessons when we fail. We sure do. I remember saying this years ago, and an older gentleman who I love to death was very conservative. I'm telling you, he nearly fell off the chair. He thought I needed to go into treatment <laughs> because I said, what's the matter with failure? And he said, no, 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 no. It's not an option. I don't option. know what happened to his kids. Right. <laughs> I, would, I would say they were, just, uh, their stress level was high. So, but, just, just, but so we don't coddle, you know, you mentioned the things. We have to listen. What are some other things that we can do? Well, I, I, I just, I still think that, it, it, and maybe this is the Mr. Positivity in me, and even in the midst of the world sometimes being hostile and very dangerous and risky and it can hurt us, I still think we need to love life and trust life and be able to say, I can handle this. Hmm. Look at all the people, look at New Orleans the other night. Oh my goodness. I mean, and, and I know that maybe we worship the saints too much, but that city is back. And that city was united in, uh, in the fact it, that- What a statement of resilience. Yeah, I thought so the, too. The flood in Baton Rouge. I mean, I know people are still probably suffering from it, right. but you just don't, you just, I can handle this. A start all over. Yeah. We, um, there's something in us that still wants to live regardless of the risk. I just think we got to accept the fact there are some threats in life, so, and it's like, I'm ready. That's it. And we have to get our kids ready. And we have to get our kids ready. Great to see you, Dr. Nick. Bye, everyone. More Weekends with Whitney after this.
See that angry soccer mom over there? Giving the referee two earfuls? Well, I'm the human dislike button, and I see it too. Championship rule section 2, part 1B. If a team does not display quality sportsmanship during the regular season, they may be barred from future sports opportunities. Gotta remember, even though they make convincing canaries, referees are people too. It's important to keep your cool and use sportsmanship in every situation. I'm the human dislike button, but one thing I do like is following the rules. To learn more about me, go to breck.org slash hdb. Atlas Foundation Repair, fixing your foundation problems for more than 30 years while preserving and protecting your trees. morning in Baton Rouge, we rise to meet opportunity. We carry the weight of responsibility proudly. We choose our paths. We move fast and we fly high. We light the way for others to follow. We make it happen. But what really matters is what happens when we land at home. Baton Rouge Metropolitan Airport. Fly easy for sharing your time with us here on Weekends with Whitney. If the wind doesn't blow me away, I'll see you back here again next week. But until then, we leave you with this. This was the most stiff, just, really? you know, just what can't drink, can't smoke, can't cuss, everything is all religious oh and spiritual. Yeah, I thought we were going to have to pull our rosary see. beads out or Oh my God, I think I, did you whatever. get all the food out, right? I got all the food. Okay. Yeah, you Perfect. think I was going to leave that for them?